Hello friends, today we discuss about how to derive equation for Carnot cycle efficiency. So first question is what is efficiency? So general formula for efficiency that is output divided by input. So here in Carnot cycle we get work done as a output and heat is supplied as a input. So efficiency is equal to work done divided by heat supplied. Carnot cycle basically consists four processes in the following order. First process is isothermal expansion. Second is adiabatic expansion. Third is isothermal compression. And fourth one is adiabatic compression. So here first we discuss about isothermal expansion process. Consider this process takes place from point 1 to point 2. So at point 1 pressure is P1, volume is V1 and temperature is T1. And at point 2 pressure is P2, volume is V2 and temperature is T1. So first we discuss about what is the meaning of isothermal expansion process. So we know that isothermal means temperature remains constant. So at point 1 temperature is T1 and at point 2 temperature is T1 because in isothermal process temperature remains constant. What do you mean by expansion process? If you expand anything then pressure decrease, temperature decrease and volume increase. So here in expansion process temperature is decrease. So here process is isothermal expansion so temperature must be remain constant. For this we applied source of heat to the end of cylinder to maintain temperature constant. So here we draw one PV diagram consider two points point 1 and point 2. So this process is isothermal expansion. So pressure is decrease from point 1 to point 2. So here pressure is P1 and here pressure is P2. So pressure is decrease. Pressure is decrease and volume is increase from V1 to V2. Here volume is in increase. So graph for isothermal expansion process here pressure is decreased from 1 to 2, volume is increased from 1 to 2 and temperature remains constant. So in isothermal expansion process heat is supplied to the system. So we know that for isothermal expansion process heat supplied equation that is given by Q1 is equal to P1 V1 log E base V2 by V1. Instead of P1 V1 we can write RT1 so RT1 log E base V2 by V1. So this is the isothermal expansion process in which pressure decreases, volume increases and temperature remains constant and heat supplied to the system is given by equation that is P1 V1 log E base V2 by V1. Now we discuss about adiabatic expansion process. For example, adiabatic expansion process takes place from point 2 to point 3. So at point 2 pressure is P2, volume is V2 and temperature is T1 and at point 3 pressure is P3, volume is V3 and temperature is T2. What is the meaning of adiabatic expansion process? Adiabatic expansion process meaning is there is no heat transfer takes place means delta Q is equal to 0. And what is the meaning of expansion? Expansion process means if you expand anything then pressure decreases, temperature decreases and volume increases. So here in adiabatic expansion process there is no heat transfer. For that the cylinder must be perfect insulator. For this adiabatic cover is both in contact with the cylinder head so that's why there is no heat transfer and the process is known as adiabatic expansion process. Let's draw this process on PV diagram here point 2 to point 3 the process is known as adiabatic process. In this process pressure is decreases pressure is decreases from point 2 to point 3 and volume is increases from point 2 to point 3 and there is a also decrease in temperature from temperature T1 to temperature T2. Again I repeat on PV diagram pressure is decreases from P2 to P3 
volume is increases from volume V2 to V3 and temperature decreases from T1 to T2. So in adiabatic expansion process means during this process no heat transfer takes place means delta Q is equal to zero. Now we discuss about isothermal compression process. Let's say isothermal compression process takes place from point 3 to point 4. At point 3 pressure is P3, volume is V3 and temperature is T2 and at point 4 pressure is P4, volume is V4 and temperature is T2. What is the meaning of isothermal compression process? Isothermal process means temperature remains constant and in compression process if you compress anything then pressure and temperature increase and volume decrease but here process is isothermal compression that's why temperature must be remain constant for this adiabatic cover is removed and sink C is applied to the end of cylinder that's why heat is rejected during this process now draw this process on PV diagram the process starts from point 3 here in isothermal compression process pressure is increases pressure is increases from point 3 to point 4 and volume is decreases from point 3 to point 4 and temperature remains constant because this process is isothermal again at point 3 process starts so pressure is increases from point 3 to point 4 volume is decreases from V3 to V4 and temperature remains constant. Here heat is re rejected during this isothermal compression process. We know that Q2 is equal to P3 V3 log E base V3 by V4 or RT2 log E base V3 by V4. Next we discuss about adiabatic compression process. Let's say adiabatic compression process takes place from point 4 to point 1. At point 4 pressure is P4, volume is V4 and temperature is T2. And at point 1 pressure is P1, volume is V1 and temperature is T1. So what is the meaning of adiabatic compression process? Adiabatic process means there is no heat transfer means delta Q is equal to 0. And in compression process if you compress anything then pressure increases, temperature increases and volume decreases. But here in adiabatic compression process there is no heat transfer so the cylinder must be perfect insulator. For this adiabatic cover is both in contact with cylinder head. Let's draw this process on PV diagram. This process starts from point 4 at point 4 pressure is P4. During this adiabatic compression process pressure is increases from point 4 to point 1. Volume is decreases from point 4 to point 1 means V4 to V1 and temperature increases from T2 to T1. Again I repeat in adiabatic compression process pressure is increases from point P4 to point P1 volume is decreases V4 to V1 and temperature increases T2 to T1. In adiabatic compression process during this process there is no heat transfer that means delta Q is equal to 0. Now combine all these processes. So first process is isothermal expansion process. So first draw so first we draw isothermal process that is process number 1 to 2 in this pro process pressure is decreases from p1 to p2 volume is increases from v1 to v2 and temperature remains constant to maintain temperature constant we applied source of heat to the end of cylinder so here a heat source at temperature t1 and we supplied heat during this process so in isothermal expansion process heat is supplied to the heat engine second process that is we know that that process is adiabatic expansion process so in adiabatic expansion process pressure decreases from p2 to p3 volume increases from v2 to v3 and temperature decreases from t1 to t2 but here in adiabatic process heat transfer is zero so the cylinder must be perfect insulator 
For this, adiabatic cover is both in contact with cylinder head. Third process is third process is isothermal compression process. So in isothermal compression process, pressure is increases from P3 to P4, volume is decreases from V3 to V4, and temperature remains constant. So for this, adiabatic cover is removed and sink C is applied to the end of cylinder. That's why in this process heat is rejected to the heat sink at temperature T2. So during this process heat is rejected that is Q2. Last process that we know that that is adiabatic compression process. So in adiabatic compression process pressure is increases from P4 to P1, volume is decreases from V4 to V1 and temperature increases from T2 to T1. So process number 1 to 2 that is isothermal expansion process in this process heat is supplied. Process number 2 to 3 that is adiabatic expansion process in this process heat transfer that is delta Q is equal to 0. Process number 3 to 4 that is isothermal process in this process heat is rejected. Process number 4 to 1 that is adiabatic compression process that means heat transfer is zero. So here uh, Carnot cycle operating between two temperature limits that is T1 and T2. So heat source at temperature T1, heat is supplied to the heat engine and some amount of heat that is rejected to the heat sink at T2. If we supplied here 100 percentage of heat and heat is rejected around 20 percentage. So what is the work done? Work done that is around 80 percentage. Uh, that's why 100 minus 20 that is 80 percentage. So work done is equal to heat supplied minus heat rejected. So work done is equal to Q1 minus Q2. So according to Carnot theorem, no cycle can be more efficient than a reversible cycle operating between the same temperature limits. Here the isothermal and adiabatic processes takes place during the same stroke. Therefore, the piston has to move very slowly for isothermal process and heat it has to move very fast during remaining stroke for adiabatic process which is practically not possible. And second limitation is it is impossible to construct cylinder walls which are perfect insulator. Some amount of heat always be transferred. That's why perfect adiabatic process cannot be achieved. There, so the Carnot cycle is not practical. First one is the isothermal and adiabatic process takes place during the same stroke. Therefore the piston has to move very slowly for isothermal process and it has to move very fast during remaining stroke for adiabatic process which is practically not possible and second main reason that is it is impossible to construct cylinder walls which are perfect insulator some amount of heat always be transferred so perfect adiabatic process cannot be achieved that's why Carnot cycle is not practical now we derive equation for efficiency we already see that efficiency is equal to output divided by input is equal to work done divided by heat supply. So we know that work done in this process that is W is equal to Q1 minus Q2. So in place of work done we write Q1 minus Q2 and heat supplied that is Q1 in which Q1 means heat supplied, Q2 means heat rejected. So simplify this. Q, uh, Q1 by Q1 that is 1, 1 minus Q2 by Q1. So Q1 means heat supplied during isothermal expansion process. So we know that during isothermal expansion process, heat supplied equation that is given by Q1 is equal to P1 V1 log E base V2 by V1. So is equal to RT1 log E base V2 by V1 because during this process 1 to 2 temperature is T1 so RT1 log E base V2 by V1 and heat rejected during isothermal compression process that is given by equation Q2 is equal to P3 V3 log E base V3 by V4 is equal to RT2 log E base V3 by V4 because in isothermal compression process temperature is T2. So here put the value of Q2 and Q1. 
so 1 minus rt2 log e base v3 by v4 divided by rt1 log e base v2 by v1 here r are cancel out so equation is 1 minus t2 by t1 log e base v3 by v4 divided by log e base v2 by v1 this is equation number 1 in step number 2 to 3 there is a adiabatic expansion process we know that in adiabatic expansion process the equation is t1 by t2 is equal to p1 by p2 raised to gamma minus 1 divided by gamma is equal to v2 by v1 raised to gamma minus 1 so temperature here temperature is t1 by t2 and volume that is v2 by v1 raised to gamma minus 1 so here we talk about process number 2 to 3 so in process number 2 to 3 here at point 2 temperature is t1 at point 3 temperature is t2 so here we write t1 by t2 is equal to inversely proportional volume so t2 at point 3 volume is v v3 and at point 2 volume is v2 so we can write t1 by t2 is equal to v3 by v2 raised to gamma minus 1 because process 2 to 3 is an adiabatic process so simplify this equation also we can rewrite this equation as t2 by t1 is equal to v2 by v3 raised to gamma minus 1 so v2 by v3 is equal to t2 by t1 raised to 1 divided by gamma minus 1 that is equation number 2 next similarly the process 4 to 1 is also adiabatic process so similarly we apply equation here at uh, point 4 temperature is t2 and at point 1 temperature is t1 so here we write t2 by t1 is equal to here at point 1 volume is v1 at point 4 volume is v4 so v1 by v4 raised to gamma minus 1 so v1 by v4 is equal to t2 by t1 raised to 1 divided by gamma minus 1 so from equation number 2 and 3 here second equation that is T, uh, v2 by v3 is equal to t2 by t1 raised to 1 upon gamma minus 1 and here equation number 3 that is v1 by v4 is equal to t2 by t1 raised to 1 upon gamma minus 1 so from 2 and 3 we can rewrite this equation as v2 by v3 is equal to v1 by v4 uh, rewrite this equation as a v2 by v1 is equal to v3 by v4 that is equation number 4 now from equation number 1 and 4 efficiency we know that that is equation is 1 minus t2 by t1 log e base v3 by v4 divided by log e base v2 by v1 in place of v2 by v1 now we can write v3 by v4 so log e base v3 by v4 so log e base v3 by v4 cancel out so efficiency equation that is 1 minus t2 by t1 so Carnot efficiency is equal to 1 minus t2 by t1 so from this equation we can say that the thermal efficiency of Carnot cycle depends upon the temperature of heat source t1 and heat sink t2 only and independent of the working substance so one question arises the Carnot cycle is not practical so why we study and what is the use of Carnot cycle so Carnot cycle is useful to compare the efficiency of any cycle under consideration with the efficiency of a reversible cycle operating between the same two temperatures limit thank you